Uh oh. I get my. I don't know what do you think? What do you think? Head out of the shot. I mean, you're you're the probe meister. Probe, probe meister. As long as you get an even. This has got a nasty tear in it, but I mean. Distribution. These are all evenly spaced. These look pretty good yeah, right here, right actually. There. Let's go right here. Right there. That one gives you a little more space. Let me get out of the shadow so I can come over on this side. Okay, go ahead. Now, when you find found your two corn plants that you want to use, you want to be careful not to damage them or any of the corn plants around. So be careful, don't step on them, make sure you straddle them good, okay? You wanna bring your tripod in here, be very cautious of the leaves, and try to get that right in the middle of those two corn plants. Then you can start by putting these screws in. And it's no different than changing a spare tire. You want to make sure you kind of get them all tight at the same time and not just go on one, okay? You want this plate to be as level as possible. So should you do that by hand or could you do it with a Today, drill? right now with the tools we have, uh, we're doing this by hand, but you can also get a half inch drive adapter for your drill. You can get them at Sears or on Amazon, they're just a couple bucks. I would definitely suggest that. And the adapter plate, is it different for a three foot? This is, we're going to put a two foot probe in here, right? 24 yes, inch? today we're using a two foot moisture probe. The swivel plate adapter is very important. You have to make sure you have the correct swivel plate for the correct moisture probe you're putting in. The two foot and the four foot use the same swivel plate. The three foot adapter is different. So make sure that's uh, noted on your order if you're ordering a brand new kit or if you have a customer that wants a different length of plate. So that looks pretty stable now. Is that uh, pretty tight, the tripod? Yeah, it's pretty tight. I didn't go too crazy on it, but it's it's pretty snug. You want to make sure it's not going to move. Okay. Okay, now we're ready to start auger augering the hole. <clears throat> make sure your chuck is very tight on the auger itself. Okay, now I would leave it on the slowest setting, which is on this 18 volt DeWall is setting number one. And I'd make sure it's on the drill setting right here, okay? Now it's very important to do very small strokes. Go down a little bit, clear that hole out. Go down and clear it out, all right? We want to take a, a reading on moisture and about a foot. You about exactly. a foot down. Exactly. So that's that's about a foot, pretty close to it. So we're going to take a couple different little sam samples here. Kind of do the ball and ribbing technique. I can already tell this has got a lot of sand content in it. It's very gritty. It's not even holding any sort of ribbon at all. And I would say for sand, this is um, average. Moisture here, um, I can definitely feel it on my hand, but it's it's not sandcastle material. Okay, so it's not really holding the a ball real well. As we're going just a little bit deeper, it's getting a little bit wetter, but it's definitely a definitely a sand. And then we'll have the uh, Sergo data to overlay on this to determine that, but we can always 
go back and override that if we think the sergo data is wrong. Just want to make those short strokes up and down, up and down, let the bit clear itself out. Now I'm starting to see just a little bit of different soil here, so I want to hit the stop. If you want to zoom in, you can see a little bit different texture of soil than just that sand. Almost looks like a little red clay type. It actually has more clay in, more clay in it. Okay, so that was maybe about a foot and a half. And the moisture is about the same. Did we expect a restrictive layer of anything down here, any kind of clay or anything like that, or should be sand most of the way down? Well, Maybe a little. Yeah, you won't run into that lens in there. Yeah, I can tell by the way it's feeding up. We've definitely got more clay in it. Definitely still sand content, but it's still kind of holding more of a form. So there's definitely more clay content in that. So you would say that's average moisture at one and two both? Or average and then maybe wet? I would say it's about average the whole way through. Okay. Notice we took the bit all the way down to the bottom, right? Yes. Now what we're going to do is very carefully remove some of the soil that's around here, okay? So we don't want to knock it back in the hole. Exactly. And if some goes back in the hole, that's okay, because remember we're drilling actually a little bit deeper than that moisture probe, okay? So if some goes back in, don't worry, it's not going to be the end of your day. Will we use the bit then after we pull the uh, tripod up to just make sure the hole still stayed clean? <laughs> yes, you can if you want. Um, but I think if you examine the very top of the hole here and everything looks okay, um, I probably wouldn't want to put that bit back in there. Okay, I feel pretty good about that hole right there. I'm going to go ahead and start removing these anchor bolts. Once all three anchor bolts are removed, be very careful when you're lifting this plate up. <laughs> and as you can see there, because we used the tripod built for this moisture probe, we're left with a very, very clean, nice hole. Nice edge integrity, nice clean hole. Now we just put some little bit of water on that moisture probe to help lubricate that hole, okay? So when we're pushing it in, we get a nice, easy, smooth entrance, okay?
Now I'm pushing on that pretty good because the tapered auger matches the tapered probe. That's actually a really tight fit right there. Yeah, you just install it so that it's flush then, pretty much? That's what I did, yes. Go ahead and zoom in on that and tell me. Good and tight. I don't see any areas around it that are going to allow water to run down the side of the tubes. So I notice we don't have any kind of a protectant on the cable. We normally we'd have some uh, nylon loom on that. Yes, that'd be preferred. Uh, some sort of cable protectant would be good. Make sure it is nylon and not plastic. Plastic does hold the animal scent and actually will attract more rodents. So if you're going to use some sort of protectant, make sure it's made out of nylon. Um, and to use some electrical tape, maybe around the head of it, wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't hurt either. Now normally we'd go ahead and hook it up to the, to the telemetry box, but we're not going to do that today, so we're just going to go ahead and pull this probe back out then. Sounds good to me. Okay. Since this is a tapered fit, once we break suction, if you think about it, uh, the probe should just slide itself pretty well right out of the ground. Sheldon's going to dig around the probe so he can get his hands around it. There is a uh, extraction device that Centec makes. You could also use that or uh, some of the guys have made their own with a pair of vice grips and some pipe. Just be very, very careful when you take these out that you don't apply any kind of a twisting motion to it. It pretty much needs to be a straight up and down extraction. And because of the tapered fit, there is, once you break suction, it's very easy to remove. And like Lambert said, make sure you're not doing any twisting action. 